Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So today I want to start off by talking about why study Islamic eschatology. Why would we do anything in the deen? We do anything in the deen because for the pleasure of Allah. And taradin anna ya kareem. Allah, you be happy with us. That's all we really want. And taradin anna ya kareem. And taradin anna ya kareem. Allah, you become happy with us. And that is the greatest achievement. Radiallahu anhum radu'an. That is the title given to the companions of the Prophet collectively. The hadith of the Prophet is known as Hadith Jibra'il, which took place about a few months before he passed away. This man, you know, they used the companions all knew each other very well. Here comes this man, they don't recognize him, no signs of traveling, they've never seen him. He is asking the Prophet these questions and then saying, Yes, you're right, you're right, you're right. What is Islam? And the Prophet answers, What is Iman? And the Prophet answers, What is Ihsan? And the Prophet answers, and then he says, When is the day of judgment gonna come? And then the Prophet says, You know, the one who is asking doesn't know any more than the one, you know, being asked. And uh and so, uh, and then the Prophet is asked, what are the signs of the Day of Judgment? And then the famous narration, you all know that, Antali the Ammat Rabbataha. And uh, so, the point I'm trying to make is, studying Islamic eschatology helps one in, in understanding what is the situation with Islam, which was the first question. Mal Islam. What is Islam? Where is Islam today? If you want to understand where what is what is happening with Islam, meaning the external aspect of our dunya, okay, our Islamic life, what is happening with Islam? Then look at the prophecies of the Prophet. Even though the Prophet is not with us, but his prophecies are with us. And his prophecies are more relevant to us today than they were ever before. This is why when we say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad and send uh, salams upon the Prophet or durud upon the Prophet وسلم, we should do it with a sense of uh, saying Allahumma salli ala Muhammad with the understanding of the favors that the Prophet has done upon us by giving us this Islam and this deen and this knowledge and this es eschatology. And so the eschatol eschatology or prophecies has to do with Nabi, being Nabi, a prophet. So even though the prophet is not with us, but his prophecies are today with us. And so we have the blessings of and the guidance of his blessings because also we live in a time of confusion. And so, Satakuna <clears> Fitnatun. <throat> The Prophet said, soon there will come a time of great fitna. And Ali radiallahu anh says, Ma ya Rasulullah? What will be the way out of this fitn? What will be the way out of this, this, this confusion that will be in? And the Prophet said, Kitabullah. And the Prophet gave a very long lecture after that. But the Book of Allah, the Book of Allah, focus on the Book of Allah. That's what we all need to be doing. But we all need to be thankful that we have the, when we send salams upon the Prophet, for example, in our prayers, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, even at tahiyatu lillahi wa salawat wa tayyibat, assalamu alayka ayyuhal nabiyu. Uh, we need to, uh, assalamu alayna wa ala ibadil salihin. We need to, when we think about the Prophet, feel what guidance and light he's given us and what prophecies he's given us. And to thank Allah for the prophecies he's given us. And uh, this way, if you know, it's not a matter of, well, let me figure out what will happen in history when Muslims will be victorious. Of course, that is, وَخْرَاتُ هِبُّونَهَا نَصْرٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَفَتْحٌ قَرِيبٌ is a part of it. You know, we feel happy when the deen of Allah is successful. That's why I said that this ending has to do with Islam, Iman, and Ihsan, perfection. And the perfection of the Prophet's prophethood is that he was able to tell us about the tall buildings, right? And he was able to tell us about the events that would be happening. And because of that, we have nur. We have, you know, ittaqu farasatul mu'min. Fear the insight of a believer because he knows these prophecies of the Prophet that will occur. And even though there's 10 different possibilities of which way history can go, but a mu'min knows that the history is going to go in this direction. And so, the other benefit of this uh, is that what Sheikh Safhawali has written in his book, Wa'adul Haq wa Wa'adul Batil. That we have an eschatology, the Christians have an eschatology, the Jewish people have an eschatology, even the Hindus have an eschatology. 
Let's see which eschatology comes true. Let's see which eschatology is coming true. Which eschatology has been most true so far? But all these things are there at the level of eschatology of Islam, at the level of Islam, whether Islam will be strong or weak. Eschatology to, in terms of the prophecies of the Prophet so our Iman can increase. Eschatology at the level of Ihsan so we can thank Allah that we have we, even if we don't have the Prophet with us, we have the prophecies of the Prophet that are coming true before our eyes, right? And we can see the perfection in everything that Allah gave us in, in, in this deen of Islam. But with every prophecy, one has to also realize that what was the question before it was, when will the Day of Judgment come? With every prophecy that comes true, with every one step we are closer to our focus is on the coming of the Mahdi, the coming of the Mahdi, the coming of the Mahdi, even though that is important. But what is more important and should be more emphasized and more thought about is that the Day of Judgment is coming. Yes, victory will come in the hands of a man called Abdullah bin Muhammad. There's no doubt about that. But what is scary is that we're actually coming near and near and near and near to the actual day of judgment. And for every prophecy that comes true, every step we get closer, we are coming closer to that, you know, that final, final end. Not in terms of just world history, but also to that very difficult, difficult, difficult day. And part of Islamic eschatology, and not only part, but rather the biggest part of Islamic eschatology is the Day of Judgment. What are they questioning each other about? Is it about the great news? What is the great news? The great news, the great prophecy, the great information that the Prophet came with is that there is a day of judgment coming. So when we study Islamic eschatology, our intention should be to make Allah happy, to see the truth of Islam, to put fear in our hearts that the day of judgment is actually coming closer. To thank, be thankful for Rahmatul Lil Alameen, the Prophet وسلم, that his sayings, his statements have come true and the statements of the Christians and the Jews and the others have not come true. And they will continue to come true. And theirs will continue not to come true. No matter how much they try to force it or bend it or twist it or turn it. It's so interesting. This is Al-Kahf, you know, the surah that has to do with Dajjal and talking about trying to bend things and turn things and twist things to, you know, make it meaningful to fit into the Bible or to the Torah. Right, Allah says about the Quran, Alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitab wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja. Alhamdulillah to Allah, all thankful and all gratitude and all shukr is for Allah who sent the book to his abd. There's no no need to twist, everything is straight. Qayyiman liyundira ba'san shadeed. A straight talk is in Quran. There's no need to twist anything to make things fit. No need to turn anything to make things fit. Right, it just fits. It just fits and it fits perfectly. So we study Islamic eschatology because in order to get out of the confusion that we're in so that we may thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the prophecies of the Prophet and to have the happiness of Allah and most importantly, uh, number one, uh, the Day of Judgment. The Day of Judgment. And of course, with that, the prophecies come, the fact that the promises of the Qur'an and the Prophet are true, and the promises in the prophecies of the others are not true or very little true. So, I will end here. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم وليسأل المسلمين والمسلمين Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Zakumullah khairan as-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.